man is running for Congress. Illinois 12th, his name is Mike Bost. You might be familiar with him. You'll be more familiar with him after we talk with him. Mike, good morning to you. Hey, Scott. How are you? It's good. Thanks, thanks for being here. Hey, uh, here's the deal. We, we, we just came off giving away our John Mellencamp tickets, and, uh, you know, we, we, we made our made our winners sing to win the Mellencamp tickets, and we thought, you know, that might be a good thing. You know, uh, somebody's running for office. We make them sing a little tune before we talk to them. <laughs> you, you got anything? I, I actually think that probably the uh, the voting public is, is singing a sad tune right now. But uh, <laughs> <laughs> Well, we've got... Um, you know, the first time we, we heard about you, Mike, and, and, you know, we follow Springfield, of course, but uh, that footage from 2012, a uh, little rant from Mike Boston on the floor after Mike Murphy, or Mike Murphy, Mike uh, Magan had dropped a, uh, what, a 200-page bill, wanted yeah. to vote in a couple of hours. 198-page bill. We had been working on a bill that everybody had agreed upon, um, everybody had agreed upon for about a year and a half. And then... With the last day, while we were going to hear it in committee, a half hour before the committee, I'm walking up the steps, and I asked our staffer, I said, okay, we're going to, I need some, uh, some my highlights of the bill. I know what we were doing with on this and that. He said, no, they changed it. I said, when? He said, in the middle of the night. I said, who changed it? He said, Mike Madigan changed it. And I said, we gotta, we got to have this in committee in a half an hour. He said, yeah. I said, what's in the bill? He said, we don't know yet. They got it 10 minutes before committee. That's not the way government is supposed to set up to run. And the, the frustration then moved from the committee onto the floor, and I, I think it was finally time <laughs> that the people understood what is going on in the state of Illinois, as well as, you know, got, you got to realize, two weeks before this, Nancy Pelosi had said that she wanted to uh, vote a bill out so we could find out what it does. Mm-hmm. So that frustration is what, from what we're understanding from people, what I express is what I believe the constituents are uh, feeling as well. I thought it was an outstanding rant. I, I thought you went off and, and expressed the feelings that many of us feel as we, you know, we don't have to deal with it, uh, you know, up close and personal, at least in the paperwork level that you do. But, you know, as citizens, we, we, we have to live through it. So, you know, I, I think maybe you spoke for more people than you realize. Well, in a representative form of government... Your representative should have the opportunity to represent your views. If you have one person that has power and control like that, and also when we deal with that with the leadership, whether it's in, in, in D.C. or the state level, and they don't follow the rules under the Constitution or the rules that are set forth, then we end up with government ran by people that don't answer to the, to the voting public. And I think it's about time that the voters took it back. Mike Bost with us, running for Congress down in Illinois' 12th district, downstate, BostForCongress.com. This is one of the few seats. Republicans did so well uh, a, a few years ago in 2010, held those games for the most part 2012, and now there are only a couple of seats that have the potential to really flip from blue to red. This is absolutely one of them, Illinois' 12th congressional district. What convinced you to get into this race, Mike? Well, you know, I just talk, talked about the fact that Nancy Pelosi and what she said and, and then to continue to watch as the House of Representatives in D.C. try to push bills that are sensible, and then they're not taken up in the Senate, that's the exact same thing that's been going on in the state of Illinois. And reality is, is with the, with the uh, uh, chief executive officer that we moved from Illinois to D.C., mm -hmm. same, same thing, ignoring the Constitution and saying, no, no, I can just do this this way. Well, I've got nine grandkids. And I could have sat back and said, okay, never mind, I'll let somebody else handle it. Or I could go and try to argue the point that what our forefathers put in place when they created the Constitution and this great country and the ability of each voter to have an impact has got to be fought for. And so through a lot of prayer and a lot of decision-making with my family, uh, we decided that it was definitely time to run. Now, Mike, back to the, uh, back to, you know, I, I don't even like to really call it a rant. I, I think it was a much needed exclamation point on the day. Um, I, I've seen people seize on this going, well, you know, we, we, we can't have a guy with a temperament like that going to Congress, although I, I completely disagree with that. But, you know, from everything I've read about you, that is, that was more the exception than the rule oh, yeah. to the way you conduct yourself. Yeah, the, the reality is I'm a, I'm a grandfather of nine. 
father of three. Uh, I deal with issues, and, and every day I work side by side with both parties to move bills forward and have for many years. But when when someone, and there's about three things that, that'll, that'll stir me up and should stir the voter up as well. When somebody takes away the right of the elected official to, to represent their district constituency, that upsets me. And if somebody wants to violate our Constitution, then I'm, then I'm going to stand up and argue with them to, to make sure that the Constitution is okay. The other thing is, probably, and, and, and if you're a parent, you understand, don't do anything to hurt my kids. Yep. <laughs> yeah. So, so, I mean, it's not a common thing for me to. No, matter of fact, I've been I've been in the legislature a long legislature a long time, and finally, people had to realize what we were facing, and it could have went very bad, but as it was, I said exactly what I needed to say, and people heard it. Mike Bost with us, candidate for the 12th district congressional seat here in Illinois. Bost for Congress.com. It's Riley and Scott on WROK. You mentioned don't hurt, don't hurt my kids, don't hurt our kids. And yet, when we continue to spend about a trillion dollars more than we bring in each year, that's what we're doing. Settling sure. kids, grandkids with, with our spending. How do we right. even begin, Mike, to, to get to a balanced budget and to begin paying down and getting this $17 trillion debt under control? Well, that's, you, you just said it. We've got to be wise in our spending, and we've got to bring back the economy of the United States. We've got to make sure, right now, we have certain tariffs and rules that are not being implemented that, that are, allow for uh, foreign governments to dump certain products into our markets. We have also put, cert, put ourselves in a, an uncompetitive advantage when it comes to the use of our fossil fuels. Um, the EPA has be, be able to, to just run amok on us as far as small business and, and large business alike. And yet we're trying to compete in a worldwide market that doesn't have to abide by their rules. So one thing after another leads to the fact if we put our economy back online, we create jobs, and we, 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 can, we just calm our spending down and make sure the federal government does what it's supposed to do, which is protect our borders deal with national defense and foreign trade. Stay out of the operation of the business of state. And that is that could in it that health care and that includes education. Those things should be handled at the state level because the, the locals should handle should and could handle them uh, better than anybody from DC. Well, and it might be argued, too, based upon the track record of the current administration, the three things you name that the Fed should do state level could handle better too. <laughs> unfortunately, yeah, but, but, but unfortunately, also in the Constitution, it says we should do that at the federal level. Yeah. <laughs> Mike Boss with us, candidate for Congress, 12th District, downstate Illinois. Uh, this is a district that absolutely could change red or for blue to red uh, this November. Bost for Congress dot com. Uh, you're a small business guy, too. And yeah. and you mentioned the economy and bringing jobs back. We just talked about a report from. Uh, Federal Reserve Survey that said businesses are being impacted, are cutting back jobs due to Obamacare. We know about the 50 employee threshold. It, it's, a, it's a disincentive to grow. Once you get past 50, you're punished. We know about the 30 hour per week threshold. Once you right. uh, work someone past 30 hours as a part timer, it's a disincentive to have people working longer. So, what do we do with Obamacare? A full repeal? Uh, do we begin to work and fix the changes that need to be done? What are we going to do? Let me, let me tell you. Uh, I, I believe repeal and replace. Repeal and replace. Look, I understood what they were trying to do. They want to deal with pre-existing conditions. They want to deal with, uh, make sure that it's affordable and portable. If you deal with pre-existing conditions at the state level, it does become affordable and portable very easily. Now, one thing that the federal government can be involved with is allowing for pooling uh, of different groups. If a company owns multiple locations throughout the United States, mm -hmm. then they should be able to take all their employees and put into one pool so that they can bring a reduced rate based on the insurance cost. Also, the same thing, and it doesn't matter whether it's, a, it's an employee, there, there, there should be an ability to pool across state lines. If we put that in place and then allow the states to deal with the pre-existing conditions 
and there is a way to do that, and, and I don't have some time to explain all that this morning, but listen to the people who are involved in the business, not the politicians, and, and, and come up with a wise answer, not just a... Do you realize that the, 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 the Affordable Care Act, Obamacare, is, if, if it's stacked on, a, on top of each other, the, the papers that are involved, the bill itself and the implementation, mm -hmm. it's, over nine, it's over nine and a half feet tall. <laughs> well, just imagine if somebody'd read that. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Spend it tonight with Mike Boss, Boss for Congress, BossForCongress dot com. Who do you have lining up with you on this, uh, Mike? Uh, where, where where are you drawing some endorsements from? Well, we're drawing endorsements from the uh, U.S. Chamber, the State Chamber, uh, NFIB. Um, we have. Uh, uh, I'm, I'm pro-life, so so the the pro-life groups. Um, we have. Uh, the list goes on and on. I'm trying to remember all of them now. I wish I had them in front of me. Oh, Caterpillar, mm -hmm. which, which is an existing company in the state of Illinois that uh, you know doesn't normally turn on, on incumbents, but, but we got there early. Uh, John Deere, uh, I'm trying to remember them all. I, I, I myself am a firefighter, uh, individual firefighter groups, so they're not the state as a whole or the federal because they don't endorse, uh, but, but we have several firefighters uh, groups in, in the district. Um, list goes on and on. Got to imagine a few Marines are backing you too. I hope so. I hope so. I got I got, got one in particular that speaks for me, and you know, I'm, not only am I a Marine, my son is a major in the Marine Corps, and and uh, he's now an active reserve, but uh, he's he's a local here, and he he's really good to send out to. If I can't make an event, to send him out. His mother did a great his mother did a great job of raising him in spite of me. <laughs> Does he pull rank on you ever? Uh, not yet. <laughs> <laughs> Mike Boss with us here for another couple of minutes. BossForCongress.com, Illinois' 12th district. It's Riley and Scott here on WROK. Uh, energy independence is something that's important, I know, for, for your campaign, too. And uh, we've talked a whole lot on the show with uh, Mark Densler and others on the uh, uh, on fracking. You were uh, ch chief negotiator for the Illinois Hydraulic Fracturing Regulation Act, which is still in limbo. This is so important for your part of the state, Mike, yeah. the, the kind of jobs that can be created, the kind of pay you can earn uh, with the fracking industry, and it's, it's on hold right now. Let, let, let me tell you how great this is for the state of Illinois. First off, the amount of jobs that would be created, the people going to work, all of a sudden the increase in, in income tax, not because you've raised the tax level, but you raised the amount of people working. That's a good way to raise taxes, by the way. Um, the amount of products that are being created, now all of a sudden you're generating sales tax. And then the severance tax that goes on that. The, the amount of money and the amount of prosperity that will occur by putting this bill in place well, the bill's been passed. Unfortunately, it's Pat Quinn and his administration dragging their feet mm -hmm. in the implementation and the overreaching of rules that we put in place to appease a, a, a left-wing group that, that if it was up to them, people should die and, the, and everything else should exist. Now, I know because I was in the negotiations with them. Mm -hmm. So this is an opportunity for the state of Illinois, through job growth, to grab, raise itself up by the bootstraps and actually have a, a, a booming economy again. So, were, it, 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 of course, you also got to worry about what the federal government is going to do with it. Mm -hmm. That's always a fear. There are uh, many important races in the ballot in November. The gubernatorial race is, is important. Illinois 17th District, Bobby Schilling with an opportunity to get back to Washington. But again, downstate in the 12th Congressional District, chance for a, another uh, blue to red seat. And that's Mike Boss running for Congress. Mike, if people want to help out in any way, shape, or form, is, is the website the best place to start for that? The, the best, best place on the website. Uh, there you can get our number. You can, get, you can donate online. You can uh, 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 be involved. We're looking for every volunteer that we possibly can. Uh, we're hitting the streets already. We're, we're, we're doing it. Now, I understand the district stretches all the way from Alton to Cairo, Cairo to Mount Vernon. Mm -hmm. And uh, so it is all of the southern and uh, western side of the state. And so, uh, yeah, we're looking for help and support. Well, we'll people uh, head right for the website and do just that. Mike, thanks a lot for taking time out of your day for us. On. Appreciate it.
Have a great day. Thanks, Mike.